Many of my colleagues here this evening may not, uh, especially the newer ones to this body, uh, may not fully understand what the CBC is. Uh, but the Congressional Black Caucus is, a, uh, is, 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 is an organization, is a caucus of African American members of Congress. Uh, we were founded in 1971. But, Mr. Speaker, that does not mean uh, that 1971 was the first year that this body had African American members of Congress. Actually, the first African American was elected to Congress in 1870. Uh, there were some 21 African Americans who served in this body uh, during Reconstruction and post-Reconstruction. But the CBC formally organized, Mr. Speaker, in 1971 with 13 members. And over the years, uh, those 13 members have now grown into 46 members. And I might say that two of our Two of the founding members of the CBC continue to belong uh, to this body. They are Congressman John Conyers from Michigan, who is actually the dean of the House, as well as Congressman Charles Rangel from the state of New York. They were two of our founding members. Uh, the CBC, as I said, now consists of 46 members. Uh, of the 46 members, one is from the other body, uh, from the United States Senate, and 45 uh, serve here in the House of Representatives. And I might say that one of our 45 is a Republican uh, member of this body, uh, our dear friend from Utah, uh, Ms. Love. And so it is, it is absolutely correct for us to say that we are bicameral and we are bipartisan. Collectively, we represent 23 states, uh, in addition to the District of Columbia and the Virgin Islands. And collectively, Mr. Speaker, we represent more than 30 million people. And I might say, of the 21 standing committees that we have here in the House, uh, seven of those 21 committees uh, has a, a CBC member as the top Democrat on the committee. We call that the ranking member. And the gentleman who will speak in just a moment, Mr. Scott of Virginia, is, is one of those ranking members on the Committee on the Education and Workforce. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, the, this past year has been very demanding on CBC members. Uh, we have been busy. Uh, we have consistently fought back uh, every day and every week against Republican attempts to balance the budget on the backs of hard-working Americans, not just African Americans, but hard-working Americans, black, white, and brown. And the struggle continues. Uh, we as the CBC have been focused on many different things. I will just mention just a few in the interest of time. We've been uh, focusing on criminal justice reform because that is so important to the African American community. We've been protecting or trying to protect the social safety net that many of our vulnerable communities depend on. We've been trying to enhance educational opportunities for African American students and strengthening and preserving HBCUs, that's historically black colleges and universities. We've spent considerable energy this year trying to, to have full enforcement of the Voting Rights Act. As, as many of my colleagues may know, the U.S. Supreme Court uh, decided in a decision some years ago, four years ago, actually uh, in 2013 it was, uh, that uh, the Voting Rights Act, as at least a part of it, and that part that deals with pre-clearance of voting changes, that that section could not be enforced until this Congress redefined the formula for determining which states or which counties should be subject to that part of the Voting Rights Act. And this Congress has not acted. This Congress continues to not fully enforce the Voting Rights Act, and we have exposed that, and we have continued to fight. We are talking about diversity in corporate America, and we're going to hear more about that in the years to come. And finally, we have talked about investments in underserved communities. Mr. Speaker, we have attempted to carry out these priorities. This year, the CBC launched the CBC Tech 2020. This initiative brings together the best minds in technology and nonprofit education in the public sector to increase African American inclusion at all levels of the technology industry. In addition to outlining best practices, diversity principles, CBC Tech 2020 has empowered our members to provide resources for African American students and entrepreneurs through the introduction of legislation focused on increasing STEM education. And I would hope that every American would embrace that concept, the concept of STEM education, science, 
technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM education and workforce development, cybersecurity and copyright and patent reform. In August, we traveled to Silicon Valley, talked to the technology giants like Apple, Google, Bloomberg, and Intel about their diversity efforts, and we were pleased with their response. Uh, this year, their, res their response and their willingness to improve the diversity within their companies. This year, we revamped the biweekly CBC Message to America. Now broadcast across several digital platforms, the Messages to America have been highly received. They have been widely watched with some of our most popular messages focusing on criminal justice reform, police violence, poverty, education, and the importance of HBCUs and ending the stigma of racism in America. Finally, on August 6th, the CBC recognized the 50th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act. In the two years following the Supreme Court's ruling to overturn Section 4 in the Shelby County uh, versus Holder case, voting rights have come under assault, Mr. Speaker. They have come under renewed assault. Since 2010, new voting restrictions have been put in place in 22 states, making it harder for millions of eligible Americans to exercise their right to vote. The CBC has been very vocal on these efforts, including outreach in Wisconsin. We filed an, amic an amicus brief in the state of Wisconsin, Carolina, and Alabama. The CBC has asserted for years that black Americans are unfairly treated and disproportionately exposed to the criminal justice system. Police bias and excessive use of force are real in the African-American community. We see it every day. We must restore American people's trust in our criminal justice system. Finally, we have worked to expand the economic opportunities for African-Americans. The CBC, in coordination with the Joint Economic Committee on Democrats, have held two public forums in, um, in Baltimore and Harlem, I might say. Title, in title, The American Dream on Whole, Economic Challenges in the African-American Community, where we discuss with those communities the impact of economic challenges and persistent inequities facing African-American communities across the country. Mr. Speaker, there are so many more things that I could say about the work of the Congressional Black Caucus. We are busy. We are engaged every day not only representing African Americans, but representing every American who is, who is, who is affected uh, by some of the policies that have been enacted by this Congress. Thank you for time this evening. I yield back. Thank you, Congressman Butterfield. That was